Yeah. All right. So, friends, welcome back. It's Bro Talks, episode two. Uh oh. Uh oh. Mate, <laughs> how are you doing today, man? The mustache is looking absolutely fantastic, as always. Thank you. Thank you. Um, doing good. Just got done with a client. Kind of tired. Just <laughs> right on. How'd that go? Um, this is one of your new guys, isn't it? Yeah. Everything's going good. First starting off in the gym, so it's always a little interesting whenever they've never really utilized a gym before. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. I know I was watching some of your stuff earlier, and, you know, you mentioned that for, for people who, you know, this is a hobby. It's not just a tool to get what you want. It's actually a hobby. It makes sense. Any gym you go into, it all makes sense. It's, you know, it's like riding a bike. But I've never, you know, I've, it's been so long since I've actually thought about learning how to utilize a gym space. So that's got to be a pretty yeah. cool thing to keep sharing with I, I think it's a lot like riding a bike. Like, um, you can ride any bike once you rode a bike. You know, yeah. like, you can walk it in and be like, here's a bike, and, like, ride it pretty decently. But definitely you can't just ride any bike when you first start riding a bike. Oh, totally. And the thing is, you know, there's some... There's some generic weightlifting exercises that people, you know, just kind of understand, you know, I got to push this thing away from my body or I got to squat down and then I got to squat back up. But so much of what's inside a gym is just weird looking stuff, man. Like I take these and I I, like pull them apart and, you know, it's just like, you know, it doesn't make sense intuitively. In college, I took a class that was like how to build a gym basically. And, uh, The professor was talking about machine companies. They're like, every machine company is owned by some random guy who probably never was a personal trainer in his life, probably does not have a kinesiology degree, probably just wants to sell you some equipment. Like, So it's really just like salesmen, they're like, oh, all these people are buying these machines. Like, I'll make some machines. Great. But at the end of the day, like some machines are better than others for sure. Like, you know, there's machines in gyms that I refuse to use because they're not good for you. So walking in and not even knowing what any of them do, not knowing which ones are good ones, which ones are bad ones, which ones to push you, which ones to rest on, like, it's kind of a crapshoot. Totally. Especially when, like you said, a lot of these things aren't necessarily made with the user in mind. They're made because people like the idea of how they should work. But at the end of the day, there are machines that not just like I don't like to use because I don't think they're effective, but they will actively like be deleterious to your your you know your function as a human. Like yeah. it's gonna shoulder impingement unless you like get the settings perfect or like this is bad for the rotation of your pelvis or something like yeah. that kind of. The one that I hate is the the ab machine that you sit on and you turn your hips with yes. it. That is terrible for your spine. Like. <laughs> That literally, like, in all my kinesiology classes, they're like, don't use this. Tell everyone you know not to use this. <laughs> well, that's the thing, though. That's what I'm talking about. The concept of that, like, ooh, I want, like, all those. And everybody sex- wants this, yeah. i ridden muscles. Like, I'll do that. I can feel that when I twist for my spine around like this. You know, just because you can necessarily feel it where you want to feel it doesn't mean that's how you should be getting, like, eliciting that response. Yeah. Yeah, I like the one, though, that you sit up and, and you move it with your hips. Like, that's a much more solid, same workout, but, um, like, you're on your knees instead. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, and, of course, because we know about it, it makes sense when we say it out loud. But they're, 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 the takeaway is there is a difference. Um, all of these machines are, are built differently. And it's crazy because with your guy, even when you teach him how to understand movement, and weights and resistance and how to even think about reps and time and recovery. There's still the fact that he's going to need some type of like chart to remember like, Oh yeah, on the chest machine, I set the feet yeah. to six handles to seven. And then I, you know, like it's just because if I'm pressing up here, you know, like, mm-hmm. like a guillotine, you know, I might understand what I need to be doing, but it's yeah. impossible for me to do it. Um, and, the, the one thing I find with new people is just like how to even get their intensity up. And I know this is kind of diving off into a different subject, but I, I, I was noticing it today is like, I'm just trying to get this guy to do the right number of reps, not like hurt himself and like get it in. I'm like, trust me, in six months, we're not going to be sitting here shooting the, shooting the breeze. 
Like, you're not going to be able to breathe, and then I'm going to tell you to do another set. I'm going to have a stopwatch, and we're going to be going hard. So definitely, yeah. like, getting the the focus and the intensity up um, helps a ton. And, and as far as workout programs go, like, when people are looking for trainers, um, somebody that's going to make you focus more and push your intensity, like, that's something – that I struggle with is just getting my intensity up. Like I, I was listening about somebody was saying, well, I know what to do. And it's like, yeah, that's fine. But until you have somebody there that like commits you to that level of focus, like unless you can commit yourself to that level of focus, some people can, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, just like with anything, knowing the facts and acknowledging them is half of the battle. I could acknowledge that I, you know, like I'm addicted to smoking or whatever. You know, I, I, I can acknowledge that. But if I have, if I don't do anything about it, then it doesn't matter. You know, I can understand that I need to work out harder than last time or it doesn't matter. But until I actually like find what it takes to get my mind right to do that, this workout is going to be a maintenance level workout. Oh yeah. Um, I, I think one last little thing to touch on that, that I think is really cool. Um, there's been a there's been a push, you know, because it, it used to be, you know, you'd go and you'd take the little the little multicolored kind of rubberized dumbbells that you'd find on like a like a sad little pyramid rack. Like I a, love those like, things. That's one of my favorite and, things in the whole gym. Oh, they're so useful if you know how to do them right. But people thought, you know, like if I just do this enough, eventually this will work. And then you had stuff like P90X that came through and CrossFit that were like, hey, you know. You guys, it's great that you've been exercising. It's great that you've been putting it into your routine. But if you're not sweating and, like, gasping and, like, sore, you know, this isn't going to create the change that you want. And, of course, you can always pause the DVD, but no one wants to pause the DVD, man. you got to keep going. And I think that that is one of the, like, people will argue me on CrossFit and P90X and all that stuff until the cows come home. But I think that's one of the best things that that whole movement brought was that need for intensity. Yeah. Beachbody is going to sponsor us by the end of this, I swear. I like, they talk about us every week. <laughs> I know, seriously, it'd be, it'd be a benefit to them. You know, seriously, we got to get a hashtag going, like, hashtag Beachbody, give us free stuff. Um, I'd love to get, oh, man, that'd be awesome. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> uh, we, uh, so what were you thinking about this week? Well, You're, uh, this is the coolest thing. Uh, this is something, and this is going to sound like I'm launching into some big, long story, but there's a quick takeaway from it. Um, I was out doing my hill sprints, which are quickly becoming one of my things that I just really look forward to in my day slash week. And I was doing them. And, you know, I'm just, I'm sweating. I'm dying. I must have the most painful looking face on. And something about that experience. Um caused this middle-aged woman who was she was getting her workout you know she was running she thinks that you know running is the best solution for her um which you know good for her she stopped what she was doing and uh, she waved me i came down the hill and i'm just kind of like oh god and she's like look at you i'm gonna try this and she charged up that hill man and it was awesome that's awesome it was so cool it was the dream man that's like that's like you know that's candy for personal trainers, even though we can't eat candy. Um, but it, it got me to thinking about the fact that people know that they should be exercising, but they don't really understand how they should be exercising, what they should be doing, or why. They have step one, exercise. Step two, uh, step three, I get the physique that I want. And that middle step seems to be just flummoxing a bunch of people. And I would love to talk with you about that today, man. Um, yeah. I, I would love to pick your brain about it. Yeah. I think that's funny. Like the whole like step one, step three thing. Like everyone gets yeah. lost on step two. But I mean, that's definitely the truth as far as like getting people to like, that's what we're working on is step two. We're all in step two, you know? Oh yeah. That's the tricky step part. Two forever. You know, that's, I think what was that? That was an old like a, a South Park joke, I think. Yeah. Step one, start business. Step three, profit. Like... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What, what about step two? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, it was cool, and the reason I brought that up is that a lot of people that I talk to, guys and girls, 
they come at me with that same kind of just like baffled. Like this lady was like purely bewildered at the fact that instead of running slowly for a long time, I would just beat myself up running up this hill really fast for a short time. And that kind of thing seems to happen a lot when people try and figure out how much energy should I be putting into cardio and how much energy should I be putting into weights and what yeah. about abs, about stretching. And um, that's kind of what got me thinking about it. I got you. Yeah, I think a lot of people need to start with a plan and then commit to the plan. And then it's just fine in a way to commit to that plan. Um, we were kind of touching on this before the call, but a lot of people have gained a, a ton of weight over this COVID. And I mean, me my, included. And at one point, I just get back to my roots and I just go back hard. But I, I think I've been noticing a lot of people on my end are just now hitting me up after years of like not talking to people. I mean, high school friends and old college friends are, have been hitting me up and been like, hey, I don't know really what to do, but like, what do you what do you think is best? And, and you know, maybe we should work out together and stuff. And I, I think like the big thing is like, whatever you got to do, find a plan, find a way to stay accountable to it. And then do it, like. Yeah, there's, there's so there's, it's tough because there's so much of me that just wants to say, find something you like because if yeah. you like it, <laughs> keep doing it. But another part of me wants to also say, based on what you've told me that you want, there are faster ways to get there. When, Reverse engineer what you want, and exactly. and. Um, and do the steps it takes to get the results you want. I think that's a lot of people go wrong there too. Like you said, like a great start is just finding something you like and doing it. However, like, why are you doing it? Like some people like running a little bit, they like a little bit, and then they yeah. start running and they're like, all right, well, I can manage this because I don't hate it, but that thing's never going to get them the result they want. So instead of continuing to do that thing, they kind of like find a program that, they actually like or something they can put up with as well but will get you the results you want so at the end of it you're not like just looking around like well i did that and now i'm back to where i started and here i am um that's the thing everything the the body is a super fine-tuned system and it's got all these different measures in place to keep itself the way that it is or get maybe even better toward like a stocking reserves and resources like, you know, we're evolutionary beings. We can't deny that. So when it comes down to training, like you said, man, it's specificity. Train for what you want. Yeah. And in your opinion, when people come up to you and they're new to this whole thing, most of the, what, what do most of them want and how do most of them think that they're going to get there? I'd be really interested to hear, you know, the general trend. Yeah. That you I love that you set that up because I, I feel like most people – are looking for an adaptation. And by that, I mean some sort of response that their body does from exercising and dieting to get the results they want, usually either losing belly fat or gaining muscle. But the, the thing about that is the, is the word adaptation. Um, if you adapt to something, that means you put in so much effort that your body was like, oh shoot, what's going on? We have to fix this. What are you doing um, every day? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you row this boat every day? I might as well like get some muscles so we can row this boat. I might get better rowing the boat. Here's some biceps and here's some core and uh, your heart rate's going to be better. <laughs> and I think a lot of people's problem is they're looking for an adaptation and they're not willing to put their body under that heavy of a pressure. Um, so for me, I think people are looking for something that they're not actually giving themselves a chance to get. I, that's, that's a really good way of saying that. I love that. I'm going to take that. <laughs> um, well, to kind of piggyback off of that, and people are people are going to think that um, that I'm I'm targeting a specific demographic here, but I'm not. A lot of people come up to me when I'm training, or they hit me up on social, or they. You know, I'm just, I'm just doing my own workout and they just realize that, um, you know, there's something that they are needing for that, that, you know, to get to where they want to be. Most people seem to think that the way to that 
generally sought after leaner, tighter physique is more exercise and mainly more cardio. Um, what do you what do you think about that? Do you think that just this kind of blind increase in cardio is a net good solution for people? I guess it depends on the person, but for the most part, I mean, I, I always say that cardio is the last thing as far as results. If you're looking for results and you don't enjoy the cardio, you got to go to the weights. Like, I mean, with adaptation, like I was talking about, really, like, you have to put your body under pressure. And our bodies are pretty designed to do cardio one way or the other, like whether it's running or skateboarding or, or jogging. Like, I, I think even the most out of shape fat person can can pretty much run when they need to not maybe yeah. not a sustained period of time but like their body's built to do it whereas our bodies are not built to lift weights like i mean they are if, if you work on it but like it's not like specifically built to do that and once you start doing that it's like all right well we're doing this like we gotta we gotta fix it you know like yeah. uh and our body is trying to compensate i mean that our bodies are compensating machines so um if you start doing one thing that's pressure, putting your body under pressure, then your body's going to come up with a response to fix that. And I think a lot of the times cardio isn't enough pressure to do that. Or if you just keep increasing cardio, it's not the right kind of pressure. I completely agree. I definitely wanted to hear how you were thinking about that, but I totally kind of t-balled it up because I am right there with you, man. People think that if they want to get, you know, a six pack and they want to be able to see their definition in their arms a little bit more and just have a better shape and fit in the clothes that they want. They just need to run more or they need to just watch more shows while they're on the elliptical. And mm -hmm. I, I view cardio as a good finishing touch and really good if you're training for a certain sport. Yeah. But yeah. And that's, that's why I said like most people, because if you have to play in a soccer game, like you better be running every day. Yeah. yeah you better get ready to just do big full field suicides because that's the game. But if you're trying to change your body, I view cardio yeah. just like steady state cardio, you know, like classic, like cardio um, as trying to make money off of the interest in your bank account. You're going to get like, yeah, one that was a bank. great analogy. But if you are actually trying to get some dividends, you're going to need to put that money in the stock market or invest it or get some real estate or something. And that's like you said, what I, where I think lifting comes in. I think the payoff is so much higher because it creates just such a, bit, a bigger need for an adaptation. Yeah. I, I, that's, you couldn't put it a better way. Doing more cardio is like trying to, to uh, make money off the, the interest in your bank account. That's funny. I've never heard that. Like it pays off. And it's nice, and I'm glad that it exists. And I would never start a bank account that doesn't give me interest. But I'm not planning on getting rich off off my, you know, credit union in the same way that I'm not planning on getting shredded and ready for the beach off of, you know, an uh, uh, a recumbent bicycle. Yeah, agreed. Or even just running. Like, I mean, you yeah. could pretty much even if you were like training for a marathon running you're not going to burn the amount of calories you need to, to get to the size you want. Like, I mean, people that train for marathons are only supposed to run three to four times a week. You end up having somebody who doesn't even like running like a marathon runner does doing five to six times a week. Now your body's hurting and you're not creating the change you want. And you can only sustain that for so long if you don't love it. And if you do love it, you're already a marathon runner. Yeah. And that's your thing. you got it. Now you train for that. You're not training to just look good naked you're training because you like to run you're you're running to run um, yeah and i that's when i look at running i would not suggest anybody run unless they're a runner like when i see someone torturing themselves when you're driving by and you're like oh that person doesn't do this every day like that sucks like you can try that and you can get better at that but like do something else like i skateboard like get a scooter get like a bike do something that's actually fun <laughs> exactly. I uh, there's I, I describe it as there's an there's a, a need for a certain like base level of I call it undercarriage work of preparatory form 
and maintenance for your lower body before you should even start running because we live lives right now that don't really prepare us well for something that we should inherently be good at. And that's a risky place to be in because everyone thinks that they should, but not everyone necessarily can right off the gate. Um, I know before, at the, at, the, at the sake of rambling here, I know that before I start any type of running protocol, like let's say it's you know, Spartan race season, I spend at least a few weeks taking care of my shins and calves and, you know, my, you know, and my, um, my medial glutes, all this little stuff that gets neglected when you sit and hang out all day yeah. that if you start running on it, you're asking for trouble. Um, and when I see people that just every step is like a fall, it's just like falling just repeatedly <laughs> forward. Yeah. Uh, I just wish that I could say like, Hey, I think that if you like this, we can make this a, an awesome hobby, but let's dial it back a little bit, learn some form, prep, your knees and your legs and your ankles and your calves and your core and then start running. Yeah. What just to bring this back around, what do you think is like most people's main goal? Like I doubt most people want to be bodybuilders. Most people don't, you know, want to be like marathon runners. Like what do you think just the average person's goal when they come to gaining something like quarantine weight or the freshman 15? What do they want to achieve just to like lose that initial amount, go back to their high school look? This is going to be the dorkiest answer, but I think that it's, I think that it is going to have an answer in it. Have you ever seen Michelob Ultra commercial? Maybe. There's this sense of just confidence and ease of these fit people that live their fast, good paced lives. They fit in their clothes well, they look good, they hang out with their friends. They don't, they pay attention to what they eat and they drink, but they don't have to pay too much attention. And they're just these good shaped, lean humans that are just enjoying their life. <laughs> now that's, that's awesome. I, I love that you, that response. If we thought that Beachbody was going to sponsor us, we got to get on with Michelob. Um, <laughs> but that's, I think that's what people want. People want to feel comfy and capable, not, not comfy. They want, people want to feel comfortable and capable in their body. And I think that that often means good, lean, proportionate, fits in your clothes well, and a level of a physique where you can go out on a Friday night and yeah. share sizers and have some drinks and know that it's not going to just add on yeah. to the fat you already wish you didn't have. You know, I, I love that response because you just made me, like, reminded me of, like, when we were in Denver and Max results. Like, did you know Mac? I know you knew him when he was fit, but did you know him, uh, like, initially when he wasn't so fit? You and I have talked about this briefly, but I, I, when I moved to Denver, he was already, like, really, really on, you know, on the uh, just an awesome path. And he just, you know, everything looked good on him, yeah. had a good lifestyle, everything was balanced. Yeah. So that, that's what I think of when people, like, like you said, like, someone who just wants to feel good in their body. Like, Mac never got shredded, but he lost 35 pounds of fat. And the difference just in his attitude about fitness and his attitude about day-to-day, -day, like, and just hearing, you know, we'd be at little social parties and, and his friends would be like, you look so good. And, like, I, I do think there, there really is, like, that, that like, Michelob ultra commercial feel. And I, I think that's a real achievable yeah. And and well put uh, response, because I think that's exactly how it is. Like we I'm going to be real, like we would still drink once every other weekend. But like the difference in just how you respond to people and then having something you're working for that pe other people can see externally and just being yeah. proud of yourself. Like that was a really well thought response for sure. Thanks, dude. Um... Of course, it's fun when you go to the beach or you're, you know, you're in the bedroom or whatever, and you just look sculpted. That's fun. But at the end of the day, most people really just want that confidence from knowing that they're fit, looking like they're fit, filling out the clothes where they want to, and keeping things kind of a lifestyle of feeling fit that I think that actually is probably the most attractive thing to people. And that looks a little bit different on everybody, but I think that it's very achievable, uh, probably a lot quicker than people think.
Yeah. Well, I think it's both, though, because I think because it's not people aren't trying to get shredded and get like a, the Greek God look like some people do. Um, they think, well, well, it shouldn't take that long. It should only take a couple of weeks. And it's like, yeah. that, when you yeah. say quick, you meant three to six months. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas um, like, I, I feel like you, you're, you're kind of thinking from a trainer mentality here of being like, oh yeah, you could do that in no time. Like if I got to the physique I wanted in six months, that is no time. That, yeah. that is like the quickest results ever. But to the, to the actual person, like, let's be real. Somebody who doesn't do this has their muscles have been dormant for 10 years. They haven't worked out a lot. Two to three weeks of working out is a long time. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad you brought up that perspective, man. That was super good to clarify um, because we, we know how long it takes because, you know, there have been plenty of times where I've flipped away from what I want and then I've rebuilt it. And I'm like, oh, nice. I'm back to being shredded and you know, everything looks good. And that, that only took me four months and <laughs> yeah. like, oh, four months. You, yeah. you did that every day for four months. And I'm like, yeah, I enjoyed it. And they're like, well, you know, it's different for people. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. It's like, um, when me and Kate did that show, I, every time I tell that story, I always get the same reaction right when I say that I stopped drinking for four months and she did six months. Like yeah. the second I say, yeah, I didn't have a drop of alcohol for four months. People are like, what? Like, I can't drink. I'm like, I mean, are you shooting for a goal? Because, like, that, that's like a different kind of goal. But, you know, if, if you want something that serious, you have to put in real sacrifice. And if you want something, any level of change, you have to put in some sacrifice. Like, like I think one thing is just, like, even in business or something, like, do you think you're going to build a million-dollar business working three to four days a week? Or can you build a profitable business for three to four days a week? Because both are good. But, you know, one of them is going to require seven days a week working mornings and nights. And the other is going to require three to four days a week, you know? Yeah. And that's, a, that's one of the things that I think people, people deserve to hear. Because whether you want to have, like, just rippling definitions in all of your muscles or – you want to look good in the medium because right now you're wearing a large and you're not really psyched on it. There's ways that you could do that slowly, like yeah. you said, or you could accelerate your progress a little bit. It's still going to take a while. You know, you can't build your credit score instantly. Um, I kind of, you know, just keeping it with the financial analogy. Yeah. Um, but you can pay but, all your, your debts, <laughs> you know. Exactly. And that's, <laughs> that's where I think people get a little bit confused on the whole cardio lifting thing because if someone wants to make a quick change in their life and their physique and the habit of fitness, they need to see results. And yeah. I, and I personally think that the fastest way to see results is not going and running all day, every day. I truly think that it's learning from someone who's already taken the time to understand all the minutia, learning how to lift weight. I've seen it time and time again, people come to me, and we rival, you know, years of cardio training in months of lifting. And I just think that people don't understand that. There's all these misconceptions about what lifting is for and why you would use it, when in actuality, it's no panacea, but I do think that it's more effective for most things than that people want. Yeah, I think so. I heard an interesting conversation between a couple friends this week, and both of them are a bit bigger. And uh, they were saying they both have boxes. This is so funny because I can relate, but like not to the extent, but they both have boxes of clothes that they won't throw away, but are too small for them because they're just trying to get back down to their old weight. And it's yeah. like, I'm, I'm a two X right now, but like, you know, next year I might be an X and then I, I don't want to get rid of those clothes. I have to buy all new clothes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I, that's that, you know, I, I, completely get that uh i based on the way that my chemistry works i have a similar but you know different problem in which for a good chunk of the year there are clothes that i have that i would like to fit in but that are too big for me and because i have a hard time keeping and maintaining muscle size i i'm on the other other end of the spectrum um and i get that i don't instantly get rid of those clothes 
And part of it is kind of a push, like, oh man, I gotta get I gotta get my numbers up in the gym because I used to fill out this T-shirt, man. Like, so I get that. I get that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I, I think it's something that's on a lot of people's minds right now. Like, specifically right now is like everybody's kind of congregating. We'll see where the country goes as far as closing back down. But while yeah. things are opening up, all these people have to go out in, into the world again. And yeah. we thought we were going to lose summer of 2020. And next thing you know, it's summer of 2020. It's beach time. All my hey. friends are headed to the beach. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think people are thinking about their physiques right now. Um, I think a lot of people are kind of stuck on where to get started. I've talked to quite a few people right now. Like, I think this is a key moment of just like where to start. And like, I, we kind of already even touched on this in the beginning of the video. And I've been kind of making most of my content around this idea is like finding a plan, finding a way to stay accountable to it and having the patience to actually do it. And I think we kind of covered all those points in this talk, but um, I just kind of wanted to touch on that again. Yeah, I absolutely think that's true. I think that if people could take away one big part from this, it's that you have to know where you're going to know how to get there. Yeah. And you have to know what you've done so that you can know what to do. So, yes, if, you know, running or was your thing before or, you know, biking or whatever, it's really good to know that you like that. And it's really good to know how well did that work? Because as easy as it is to just start doing that again, if you're looking for a different change, you're probably going to have to use different methods. Yeah. Um, so and I'm let's, excited. Yeah. And, and let's actually talk for a second about the people that do, we kind of touched on it, but um, the people that do want like more results, like, I mean, and, and more serious change. Um, because I know there's a lot of people that were former athletes and people that before quarantine and everything, they were going to the gym pretty hard. Um, maybe not seeing the results they want, maybe seeing the results they want, but like, really wanting to get like a six pack for the first time or really wanting just to like be on that next level. Cause I actually have a friend in mind that I'm thinking of that. Um, yeah. I mean, I was saying it earlier is the one that knows what to do, but like really needs that next level of intensity to achieve what they're talking about. Right. 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 Um, and, and I well, do think it goes back to sacrificing more. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, I think, I think I think that I think that maybe maybe hey maybe even the next time we chat there should be a big we should have we should have like a just a cool open ongoing discussion about about diet because yeah we I we we'd be remiss in talking about making you know quick tangible change without diet. But I'm, I'm glad it, you said that. Yeah, I I was actually thinking as I kind of finished the question I was thinking well. In that case, you got to go back to the plan, like back to the reverse engineer, like we were talking about reverse engineer the results you want and really yeah. dial in the plan. So I guess to answer my own question and to kind of jump in off of what you were saying is like to dial it in more, you need to put those steps in place for you to, to get to that next level. So, so recalibrate yeah. the plan and then go from there. Yeah. And I think I'd love to have a conversation with you on that. And I think that that would be something that could be could be really useful for people, you know, as always with anything that, you know, we put out, cherry pick what you need, leave the rest. But one of the big things that I think that people are going to really be dealing with, um, because the motivation, you know, is probably going to be high. We haven't been able to go back in the gym. We've been seeing and thinking about being in the gym and lifting the weights and, you know, getting shredded and being jacked and all those things. But there's going to be an adaptation period because I know the second I haven't gone back to a gym yet, they're not open yet. But the second that I go back to a gym, I'm going to want to lift all the weights ever. And it's going to destroy my body. And that's going to kind of hurt my progress and my motivation a little bit. And I think that people, like you said, need to recalibrate. Like, all right, I haven't deadlifted in a while. I need to make sure I remember how to do this, practice how to start doing it again safely. And start with less, because not only will my body need a slower adaptation curve to get back into it, but there needs to be room to grow. I'll never start a client out doing their maxes all the time. 
because they'll get great growth doing 70% of their max. And then when they stop, we'll go to 75 and, you know, we'll just keep working it up. Of course, it's more complex than that, but um, people are going to be really gung ho and they're going to need to realize that they've taken a few months off. I know I will. Yeah. I'm feeling the same thing right now. And our gym's just opened up. So I, I got you. Like I remember, um, when I, uh, you know, for, for the people, um, I broke both my wrists simultaneously and couldn't do really any type of lifting. Um, I couldn't hold a bar for legs. I couldn't hold on to the machines for, and, you know, I just, I couldn't hold dumbbells, lunges, anything like that. And then when I got those casts off and I was cleared for, you know, go lift, do whatever you want. I was bench pressing like 50 pounds and it was trashing me. And it was really discouraging, but it was also really cool because at that time, 50 pounds was all that I needed to get sore. And that's all that this is, giving your body a stimulus that it needs. So I think people are going to have a pretty cool if they just take an experimental mindset to the gym and kind of check the ego a little bit. They're going to be mm -hmm. able to re rebound in a way that's healthy and fun instead of um, – you know, these people that we're talking about that are really psyched on it, uh, you know, losing a lot of ground. I don't think that's really the way to see this. Yeah, I'm with you. All right, bud. Well, kind of kind of went off on a little Shakespearean. Yeah, no, I was just thinking like that's kind of I mean, I think we kind of touched on the, the whole talk here. We're kind of full circle. Um, I think so before I break into iambic pentameter, I think it's probably time that we uh. We close the curtain on episode two. <laughs> get, psyched, uh, get psyched on maybe some cool diet talk. Um, yeah. You know, like I loved your first step uh, theory yeah. that you were putting out videos. Just like, hey, here's like a few quick things. Get started on these. I love that. So I was thinking maybe like even giving examples of like we could have a talk based on like this is the kind of results you want. This is the kind of diet you want. This is the kind oh. of results you want. This is the kind of, you know, exercise you want. Or, you know, along those lines. I think that would be pretty pretty good for people. I absolutely think that would be true because we'd be we'd be launching a lot of really useful ideas out into the that yeah. strategy. But if we don't back up how to reverse engineer what you're looking for, then uh, you know, we've only we've only done half the battle. So I think that's a great idea, man. Yeah. Cool, cool. All right, buddy. Dude, you're the man. Thanks so much. It's always a pleasure. Um, I'll catch you soon, man. Peace, love, yep. and muscles. All right, Later. Man.